Have you ever heard that before? Have you ever heard that from the pulpit before? Well, it's a good thing Bishop Greg is, is leaving, so uh, he <laughs> um, So yeah, I, I disagree a little bit, and I think uh, I think Jesus will understand. So um, a, a slightly different twist on this, and I want to I want to go to uh, I want to go to um, our indigenous brothers and sisters, and and um, for our indigenous brothers and sisters, prayer and learning never stop. Right? There's never a difference between secular and sacred. Right? Secular and sacred. They're always intertwined together so that everything is sacred. Everything is prayerful. Right? In, in our dominant culture, our prayers tend to be episodic. Uh, either I'm in prayer or I'm not. And saints, um, I, I want to hold this up for you because uh, while that's good, um, it's not ideal. Ideal is when we are in prayer and in life seamlessly, one to another, one to another, where everything we do is prayer. Everything we do is prayer. St. Francis in his... Uh, in his rule of life, the last, uh, the last part of his rule of life is pray always. Pray always. You know, not pray when you're in church, or not pray when you're at the table, not pray when you're you know, driving your car. Pray always, right? Seamless. Seamless. No difference between, between prayer and not being. So what I think might be going on here at the Mary and Martha dinner is, yes, um, Mary was at such a place in her spiritual growth where she absolutely needed, needed to hear what Jesus was saying. This was obviously brand new learning for her, and she was absolutely transfixed by what he was saying, by what he was saying. And so uh, for her, at that moment in time, the best ministry she could offer was to sit at Jesus' feet and be a sponge and soak everything, everything that he had. Perhaps Martha was in a different place spiritually. Perhaps Martha was in a more mature place spiritually, where she was always in communication with Jesus. She was always in communication with God, with Creator. Her, her life, both uh, spiritual and secular, were seamless. So that in all her rushing, in all her duties, in all her preparations to make sure everyone was happy and healthy and informed, were a prayer. Or just as much a prayer as, as Mary's contemplation at Jesus' feet was a prayer. Both were a prayer acting in their own way, ministering in their own way. One at novice learning and one at extremely mature spiritual level. Now, do I know that's what happened? No, but, I, but I've seen examples of it. I know that uh, there are some of us here today that are extremely spiritual mature, where you know exactly what I mean, that you're never out of prayer. And so um, perhaps we give Martha uh, too little credit uh, too little credit when we see her as the busy, uh, busybody who doesn't have time for Jesus. Perhaps it's exactly the opposite. Perhaps she always had time for Jesus. And Jesus was that true and trusted relational friend that is never away from her, is never outside of her heart, is, is uh, everywhere together with her at the same time. Perhaps that's true. I hope it is. And Jesus, we know we, you. Lo I love you. And, uh, um, you know, we, we can disagree from time to time. It's okay. But I think that's perhaps why you, uh, you sent this message today, to, uh, to uh, help us give uh, Martha's a break. Give Martha's a break because uh, we really don't know what's in the mind and the heart of another and uh, when we look and see and, and uh, when we are self-righteous sitting at Jesus' feet and we see another out uh, doing his work in the world, do we look at them with disdain and think how superior we are? Perhaps 
No, let's not. We need the Marthas of this world. We need the Marys of this world. Like most, are the things, are, is the right place at this end or that of the spectrum? Usually, usually the right end is right in the middle. The via media, the middle way. So saints, as we take this home today, what am I hoping? I'm hoping that uh, as you begin uh, uh, to uh, maturize your relationship with God, that your prayer becomes less episodic and more continuous, um, less in, more internal and less external so that we are always walking through the midst of Jesus. We are never there, whether we're sitting at his feet or whether we're doing his dishes. We ask this in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father and of the Son.